Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to take a look at two tablets from Wacom which they sent to me. So full disclosure, this is a sponsored unboxing and review, but I haven't opened this up yet. So let's get to that after the break. And I can't even show you what it is because I haven't opened it yet, but here they are. All right, Doctor, the scalpel. All right. You got one and two. So in here, I have the Wacom Intuos Pro. And in here, we have the Wacom One Creative Pen Display. That's the box. Here, like that, and like this. So let's open that up. So in here, we have the tablet. That is the size thickness and underneath that came right off that is the usb power cable we have the pen that is a weighted pen holder extra nibs and in here we have the instruction manual that is it nothing else in there that's what's in the box let's put us back this is the Wacom One Creative Pen Display, so let's open that one. That's in here, let's get started. Blank box with instructions at the top. Connect Wacom One to your computer and plug in power. Install the latest driver and register, of course. Let's take this out. Ooh, we have a little case. That is your screen and tablet. Comes with rubberized feet, doesn't slide around, and Clickable stand for the slight incline. As you can see here, extra nibs. Closes back up. You got the pen. Even the pen has a little protective case here. Let's take this off. Here's your pen, your logo, button. Let's open this here. So instructions for power connection. Ah, all right. Extra cables, extra power. What do you have in here? Power plug, clip on, seems to be it. Instructions, that's it. That's what's in the box. So let's hook this up to the computer and test it and move to the other room. All right, I got out of the office and actually this is, I'm not, I didn't get out of the office right now. This is weeks and weeks in advance. I've used the Wacom One now for all kinds of things. I got multiple cameras set up here to show you what I do with it because I have multiple usages and I'm going to go through some more of the specs and then the pros and cons. So of course there will be chapters. So feel free to jump around to see what you are interested in first and um, let's go. So after the unboxing, if you are interested in the specs, I'll put the link in the description here. You can see everything that goes on. You have a video I'm not gonna play it here but you can watch it you can also see what this is for so drawing visual thinking photo and video enhancing and annotating there's all kinds of things it's basically a drawing tablet now it does need to be connected to your computer it's not something that's a standalone thing like an iPad or whatever that has a built-in processor you can take this anywhere in the house this is connected through one cable that goes for power and to your HDMI display. Well, let's continue here. So you can go down and you can see usage from pen and paper using a computer and using Android. So different ways of using that. Continuing down, you can see how this is constructed with the stands and this is the view of it, right? As you can see the unboxing, if you have an Android, you can connect it through a dongle as well. So if you do have one of those phones, I have an iPhone, so I can't do that. You can connect this here and you can see what this is for. You have here the nibs, I showed you that. This is the tablet in all of its glory with the packaging. And then you can see here the feet like such. And you can see where you can put the pen up here which is like that for me down here in that orientation. You might be wondering why, <laughs> why is it like this? I'll explain to you how I'm using and what I'm doing with this. Well, let's go down, here are the specs. So this is a 13.3 inch screen. It's a 1920 by 1080 pixels resolution, which is something that you need to consider. It's not 4K or anything, it's 1080p. Battery free pen, which is cool. I also have a smaller one that I shall pull into my screen here. So that's the, the little guy, tiny, tiny here. And that one uses this kind of pen. Now, speaking of pens, that is the Wacom One pen. The Intuos pen, this one, and you can see them all, the differences here. The Intuos is definitely thicker. 
and I'm fairly used to the thinner one. But at the same time, I gotta say, it's very light. The thickness of it at the front is actually pretty nice. It has a bit of a squishy feel to it. The buttons are nice too. I'm undecided yet yeah, which one I prefer. I really like the feel of it as you navigate on your tablet and how, to, how you use it. Uh, I'm just very used to a very light, thin one. But again, it's not a huge, huge difference. But it is battery free, it has tilt recognition and works with the ergonomics obviously of that and it's compatible with Windows, Android and Mac. Going down here, you really have everything in there that you need to know about the tablet. I'm not gonna read through everything. Feel free to browse around. Again, I'll put the link in the description. But scrolling down, you can see the accessories. You got the power, the X-shaped cable, you got the nibs, that's the pen, and you can add this now, this is not included, but I like this a lot, but I don't need it right now because with Interest Pro, I have the extra tools here. You can see this as this was already moving. You have your rotational scroll, this is also a touch, which is cool because you can turn it on and now you can have controls with pinch for zooming in, scrolling with your fingers. I'm a big fan that you have that extra button where you can turn this on and off just in case you don't need it or you want to use it. But the Express Key Remote looks pretty cool too. And there are other things like the Wacom Wireless Keyboard. Now, I would compare this to a Cintiq and a Cintiq Pro, mainly because of the usage, the size of it, the display of it, and also the extra buttons. So with the Wacom one, it's a 1080p, there are no extra buttons around it. So if you have to do any kind of navigation or if you do any critiques and, and you wanna frame through, you don't have anything there. You have to use your keyboard, or in this case, I use my Intuos Pro, which thankfully is Bluetooth. You don't have to deal with the cables. So it really comes down to what your usage is, what you wanna use this for, specifically for drawing, as you need better quality, I would definitely upgrade to the Cintiq ones. But one more thing, as you get this, it also comes with software. So you have Clip Studio Paint and it says up to six months. So this is timed. You have Bamboo Paper, which includes all pro features. This is not timed. This is valid for Windows 10. It will be Creative Cloud Photography Plan. This is a limited time. And Adobe Premiere Rush, again, limited time. And in the future, you're gonna have Adobe Fresco. Clip Studio Paint and Bamboo Paper function as you would expect. You can paint and draw and everything on the Wacom One. I'm really not a painter at all, but the Bamboo Paper was very interesting just for quick sketches and notes. One of the hotkeys on the Interest Pro brings up the Wacom Desktop Center. So on here you can see the devices that you have, so Wacom One and the Intuos Pro, backup setting, update support, and story of all kinds of things here. So on the Wacom One, you have Redeem Your Software. I'm not gonna click on this because it's gonna show you my serial number. We're gonna bring this up, and the reason why it's still there is that I did not use use the Adobe Creative Cloud just because I already have an Adobe uh, account, so I don't need to use this, but this has been redeemed and all offers redeemed on the Intuos Pro. So as you buy one, make sure that you take advantage of that. Let me bring this up to the side. But as you go down here, your pen settings, you can see all the devices that you have. So this is what I was talking about. I'm using the Intuos Pro. You have the Wacom one, but you got a different one, like a little tiny one. So here you have your modifier. This is for your tablet, for your pen, and the mapping and all of these. Same thing goes for Wacom one and the Intuos Pro. You can set your current pressure, the tip feel, and you can see what you can do here. You have all kinds of options. If you're familiar with Wacom, these are very, very detailed and very helpful. Eraser and mapping. Also, the Wacom one does not come with a eraser tip either. It's just the right click here, which of course you can change to a middle click if you want to, but then the right click will be missing. But just going back to Interest Pro, the mapping is here as well, just like with my little one here. These are all the same functions. Again, mapping, eraser, and pen. Now, if you go to the Wacom one, of course, you got the pen, all those options here, and you got the calibration, but then you have the display toggle. So you got more options on this here, and especially the on-screen controls. As you close this though, you have display settings. And bringing this up here, you can change the brightness and the contrast, the color setting, which you also have a custom color here, or a color temperature. Temperature. You can go into the advanced mode and that tells you here the one-to-one -one or full aspect ratio. You can do a factory reset, cancel this here. And these are my settings here. So let's move to the actual practical usage. And you're wondering again, why is it like this? The cool thing is that with the Wacom One, we have an HDMI input. So it technically serves as a second screen. As I work on my bigger things, Premiere, editing, Maya, anything that I do or work related, can't talk about it. This is on my main big screen. So what I do, I have everything extended over there so when I work I like to listen to movies and soundtracks so I have my second screen here where I can grab this out and over here you can move this around so I got my iTunes here with the music I got my movies that I can play so this is all very very 
cool as a second screen. Now, here is the tweak that I did. So you can see the feet are up here. Let me move this just a bit here. And then as you have your pen here, everything moves. I can move this around to minimize all of that. So I'm actually going to bring a different movie up here. And this is how I'm using this. So you can see this with the top down camera here. You can see that. There you go. So I got my keyboard here. I can frame through the clips. I can obviously also scroll through. And if you have anything that you need to critique, you can easily just draw on that and talk about how the balance is and blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want to talk about in terms of the critiques. But this is very very useful i'll show you like that and it's much much more convenient to see what's going on on the screen here so if i move forward you can scrub you can see all very easily i can access all those tools it functions as a normal tablet the speed of the pen is really good there is a small gap where the tip falls onto the surface of the tablet and then where the actual drawing starts so if you draw here i can see a slight difference between where that tip is and where as i said the line starts of your drawing that's an issue for you something to think about but it's very responsive and it's so much easier to draw all like this as you can see what's going on versus how I used to do it where I have my tablet down here and I have to look and oh did I is my tablet in the right orientation obviously you get used to all those things but it's just an extra level of convenience and practicality using the Wacom one which is very light it's very thin it doesn't take up too much space you don't have a ginormous piece with maybe an arm you need to put down although a swivel arm would be kind of cool since I'm using this as a second monitor as well but anyway so I can either use the keyboard to go back and forth but you also have hockey so I can set up the back and forth on these so sometimes what I do is also you can put this underneath here and I can go forward and back here as I want to go through a shot I can go forward I can go back with the hotkeys and as you can see it's all super convenient I mean it's all dependent on what you want to use these keys for if you want to use your tablet while you work if you want to use your keyboard it really all kind of depends on your setup what you prefer or how you have your keyboard located but because it is so light and easy to use you can position this however you want to now speaking of positioning so this is what i do this is not really how i work because of the cable so i actually turn this around and you can see this as I bring it over this is in the uh, rest state where that cable actually drops right there where the table edge ends because it's not that's not the ideal method so that table goes back here you can see this right there and the feet in its upside down way still hold that monitor up and the thing is because this is a second monitor whatever how many monitors you have but it's an extended screen you can change your orientation so with my Intuos Pro here with all these buttons I have here hockey to move this back and forth this is through a software here I'll show you that's called screen rotate and I can decide what I want here and you can do this manually like this or you can use your hotkeys like such let's go back to this you minimize this so whenever I move this around I can change this this is now my second monitor as you can see I can go back to watching movies if you want to and again technically I could turn this around and move it like that to use the feet the way they are and with my hockey change this around but it's just a bit of a pain to be honest with that cable and this is my, one of my biggest issues is this cable so what I do actually I don't do it like that I fold in these guys and I actually I can put it up here and that way I can do all my critiques perfectly on here changing colors I can do all kinds of things I'm using this with keyframe pro so you can do all kind of things on there and I can put my wrist on there since this is not a touch screen you don't have to worry about multiple things on there. You can hold this however you want. It will only detect your pen input. And if I take this off and actually bring the bamboo paper over again, this is an extended screen. I can just move this over and it moves onto my screen here. And then there you go with your whatever sketching you need as a whiteboard. You can have your eraser like this. You can make this full screen if you want. And again, you can do whatever sketching is very responsive. It's a very interesting quick little sketching tool again i'm horrible at drawing so it's not like i'm gonna have massive pieces on this but it just shows you the flexibility of the wacom one because it is a second monitor so you can bring whatever you want onto that second screen so if you bring a uh, a movie for reference and you want to look at well this is an element that I like as I go forward. This is an important moment as the tiger misses here, what's going on and so on. This is a really great way to plan out your animation, your references, but that's gonna be a different clip. And once I'm done with that, I can just grab it, open up the feet, 
put it to the side and there we go. It serves again as a second screen and then go back to my regular usage where I do whatever I need to do on the full screen and I have my second screen there. So in that aspect, I'm a massive fan. It's really helpful when I do critiques, to do drawovers, to plan out the references and the animation. It's really cool. Again, it's very light. It's not very cumbersome for me to grab this and bring it down. If you have a different setup, of course, it'll be on its feet. But I think that's a big plus that it's small, it's thin, it's light. It works really well. And using that screen rotation hockey for me, I can easily, like I said, use this in its intended way with the feet or with my trick since I have this little stand here for my monitor. So overall, it's really, really cool. I'm using it every day clearly for actual usage and a second screen. I'm a massive fan. Now, everything has a downside. So here are the cons. First of all, I'm used to all kinds of pens that have two buttons. So one is for the input. Then I got this one, the front one for middle mouse. And then the second one here in the back is a, is a right click basically. The Wacom doesn't have that. So even if you would put Maya on that second screen and use Maya in here to do maybe grease pens, all kinds of things or blend or whatever you want to use, it doesn't have a right click. So it makes the navigation within Maya a bit tricky. If you upgrade to a Cintiq or different tablets, some of these pro pens are are compatible and you can use them across different devices. And I wish that was the case. Now, all the cons that I'm gonna list here is also because this is a cheaper version, not cheap as in badly made, but this is a financially cheaper version. So it works for your budget. So everything I'm saying that, well, I wish it would do this. Well, there is a higher model, a pro model of Cintiqs that do exactly that. So it's not so much as a con, as in a complaining. I mean, each product has its target audience and its budget. And there's only so much you can do within that price range in terms of the features and the hardware costs and everything. But here, I'm just mentioning what I found. Ideally, even with all that stuff that I like, a second button would be really cool. I really would prefer a second right click button. So you have one, two, three on this. Of course, ideally I would use this across all of them. But if there was an update to this, I would absolutely change that. Now, the biggest con to me, and I found the work right as you can see, but the biggest con, let me bring this back here. And even though it's somewhat long, is this cable. I'm just really not a fan of that cable. I have to be honest, mainly because my computer is on the right side. Again, this you would think, well, then that's your fault. Sure it is. But this is on the left side, ideally, either in the middle, super ideally it would be left and right. Might as well put it in the middle, but it's also one ginormously thick cable with the USB, the power and the HDMI as an output. And it's just very, it takes up a lot of ports. And yes, I can move my computer to the left and I do have another computer there. So, but if I would change something, something, it would be this cable. Also, I would make it longer. Because one of the things that's kind of tricky, if I bring this down and let's say I would use this in its actual intended orientation, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to do. So I have to actually use my trick here and rotate this. Well, let's bring this back. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm gonna put this actually down so that there is enough room here with the cable. The microphone. Gotta move everything back. My microphone is very low here, but this is how I would work when I stand. So now my desk is at its full standing position here. As I have a standing sitting desk, it doesn't quite work with this cable because the cable is just not long enough. So I can bring this around. I can do my trick here and put it back there. I also moved my monitor back because everything gets kind of short, all the cables, the monitor cables are a bit tricky there. So it just kind of works with that screen orientation trick. So if I had this in the right way and that's your actual orientation, it just wouldn't work. The cable is just not long enough. So it actually forces me into this trick here. Now let's re-switch this here. And then I can go back here and do whatever I need to do, right? Do full screen and blah, blah, blah. But that's me lower. That would be one of the things. And again, with a better cable, maybe centered hardware wise, where you plug it in and make it really long and one nice USB-C cable. I think that would be ideal. Right now, this it's a bit cumbersome and for ergonomic reasons, as I'm standing, it's not super ideal. Well, let's bring things down again. That hurt my eyes. Keep your eyes open like this. So anyway, cable, that's probably the biggest thing. Now, the other thing is that the screen is 1080p. To me, in my setup, the way I use things, I wish that the resolution would be higher. Again, there are other models I can go to a Cintiq and that would solve the resolution problem. I totally understand. So you have to remember that this is the budget version and that has to come with certain constraints and one of them is the 1080p resolution. So if I could magically change the next version, different pen, either you would be able to use this one or just an extra button, longer, USB-C cable and the high resolution, 
yeah, again, this is kind of like, well, then just use a different model. Yeah, so it's not really a massive thing. And for my critiques, it works. I don't need a 4K screen to critique my, my students' work. So 1080p, and I record it anyway at that or even 720p resolution when I do my screen capture. So it's totally fine. I love it. So for what I'm using it for, for sketches, for planning, for critiques, for all of that on a daily usage, it's really cool. The price point works really well. I'm a big, big fan of it. And I think that's the bottom line. It's not something where I go like, yeah, that's kind of neat, but I don't know. And I put it aside. I actually do use this every day. And like I said, the bonus is the second screen, which I use all the time. So if I don't use the actual drawing function, it's there on a daily usage and it's super helpful. I have to admit though, because it's so cool, it made me look at Cintiqs. Again, I can't really, I don't draw well. So you might argue it's not really the right product for me, but I just really like the function of it. The drawing, especially for critiques, is super useful. So I'm going to kind of look at Cintiqs to see maybe I'm going to upgrade and see if there's something that I can use that has the extra function keys or something that's a bit more of a better upgrade that I could incorporate into my workflow. Speaking of workflow, if you are in a flow on your work and you want to work with me to improve your workflow, I don't know. I have workshops, of course, you know what I'm going to say at the end of this clip. You can sign up at any time so I can work with you and make your shots even more awesome. Link in the description, as always, you can sign up at any time. And speaking of time, if you're still watching after all this time, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your patience. And if this was helpful in any way, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. And that is it, I would say, and I will see you in my next upload.